three. Thank you so very much. Jimmy Jack, Revocable Trust versus Bank of America, seven two zero zero three two. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Angela Ochoa, bar number one zero one six four, on behalf of Sun City Anthem. Good morning, Your Honor. Your Honor, Jacob Medrala on behalf of Opportunity Homes, LLC. Nona Tobin, Pro Se. I do appreciate it. Okay, now this one I was a little confused on because we have today's motion and then we had a counter motion on 4 6. And then we have a motion for summary judgment for 4 18. And then you want to come back again for a motion to dismiss on 4 27. Yeah. So it seemed to me that there was a lot out there. Um, Perhaps I could explain. Um, originally, um, I filed uh, a um, cross claim against Sun City Anthem uh, on January 31st. And then the um, uh, attorney, then attorney from the Leach Law Firm for the HOA filed a motion to dismiss. They didn't answer that. But then on 3-3, I filed an opposition motion and a counter motion um, that uh, was scheduled for April 6th. I got on March 10th an agreement from the prior attorney for the HOA, from the, um, from the, uh, can, can I cut you quick a bit? Did it make sense? I mean, I'm more than glad to have you come here four different times to hear motions that are somewhat interrelated, but it, it seemed to me sense. that you all might wish to have this all on one day and do the totality of everything so that all issues can be addressed. So. Absolutely. It makes sense that we're all here but on does April that make 27th. Sense? Well, there, there is a little bit of a difficulty. After um, I had the agreement to put the motion and opposition on uh, April 6th, the HOA changed attorneys, and then they refused to have any settlement discussions, which had already been agreed to. And, um, you know, I they have also put... Um, the Leach Law Firm required me, as a candidate for the Board of Directors, to put the fact of this litigation down on my conflict of interest form. They wrote it for me in order to accept my... Right. I, I, the reason why I'm interrupting you, and I'm trying to be appreciative, is that really my simple question is, do you all want to come back here four times and discuss various issues, or do you want me to consolidate these to one hearing date and handle all four matters at the same time? I would prefer to have the first two handled on the 6th and the last two on the 27th. Your Honor, my preference is to have it on the on April 27th, and I'll tell you why. Our motion to dismiss that's going to be heard on the April 27th is a standing issue. It is that a trust cannot be represented by a proper person, that she has to have an attorney. And so that's the issue. Um, I don't know if we can necessarily proceed on April 6th if that's outstanding. I have already noticed. Just what, one, one second. Let me. Your Honor, very politely we, waiting and didn't get to say anything. Go ahead. We filed a motion for summary judgment against Ms. Tobin as well as against Nations Mortgage, and this motion is to be heard on April 18th. But I would prefer actually to consolidate it with all the other motions that are out there pending, and perhaps we could do it on April 27th. The reason why the court's inclined to, I mean, you know, I, in seeing all these, t took a look at it. I got to deal with the standing issue, right? Because I got to know whether you can be here only as a pro se litigant or whether or not you could be here. And the court's not taking any position. Right. Uh, but as you know, EDCR 7.42 does exist, and the court takes no position as to its application here. But um, it, it seems to me that, and I feel bad about the fact you've already waited to say these next words. However, it does seem more efficient efficient and effective is because there's such a cross overlap in everyone's variety of requests. If I do everything on the 27th, and the reason why I'm suggesting the 27th is because that means the deadlines with regards to oppositions and replies that have not yet expired get to all still be taken into account. It gives you all also an opportunity to see if you can work a resolution by the court doing it on that date. And because it is the motion to dismiss with regards to standing, which is a necessary prerequisite really for much of the other relief that's requested by this court. And unfortunately, you all didn't file that until the after the other stuff got filed, and I appreciate you came into the case, et cetera. So that's where the court's inclined to go. 
Yes, I, I would just like to say that I have already provided um, Mr. Ochoa, uh, the current attorney, the um, disclaimer of interest from, from the other party that was a beneficiary of the trust and a quit claim deed uh, removing this property from the trust to me as an individual. Oh. Which I'm Ms. sure you're going to tell me is going to present its own challenges. Go ahead. Ms. Tobin um, is talking about um, something that she said she provided to my husband, who also works at the same firm as I, I do. So I know from speaking to him that she did not provide those documents. So what it is, what, what she's talking about, I'm not quite sure because he represented to me before coming here today that, that, that he didn't receive them. So I'm sure we can talk about it on April 27th, but as of today, he does not have those documents. Okay. So all right, then, that, then doesn't it make sense to you all can get everything consolidated, taken care of, make sure everybody has all their issues taken care of, and we see you all at 930 on 427, and on that date we'll handle all four motions. Sun City Anthem's motion to dismiss as an individual and trustee of the George B. Hansen's cross claim, counter motion voiding the HOA sale, the motion for summary judgment, and the motion to dismiss. Okay? And then to the extent that we don't have some of those pleadings yet, which we don't own some of those because I appreciate deadlines aren't there, gives everyone an opportunity to get them all taken care of. We can deal this all in one fell swoop. It doesn't look like the HOA sale has already taken place, so I don't have an issue of something that we have injunctive relief. So it seems to me we can take care of that all, allow you all the full opportunity to get things resolved to the extent that there's some difference of opinion on certain documents. It gives you a chance to get things moving along there, and it gets all parties a chance to get where they need to be. I'll see you back on the 27th. And Your Honor, could I request that the, um, the uh, HOA be required to um, consider the settlement that was? The court can't require unless she you can appreciate I can send you all to a settlement conference if you think that that would be productive for the parties. They but have refused all attempts at settlement. And, and as your trial judge, I can't hear about settlement negotiations. That would not be proper for this court to hear, okay? Um, but with regards to if all parties are interested in a settlement conference, then the court can send you to a settlement conference. Are all parties interested? No. I think it's premature at this time. We've got two out of three that say no. So at this juncture, so with an early case, the court wouldn't find that there's an independent basis, okay? So I do appreciate seeing you at 9.30 on the 27th. So just 9.30 on the 27th. Moving on to Joe Brown versus Landry's Inc., 739-887, which is page 4.